Good morning. Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. It is Thursday, March the 23rd. We're almost through this week. So, so close. Good to have you with us this morning. We've got your HCC news and information coming up for the next half hour and some special guests before we get to them. Um, I'm usually not here on Thursdays. Charday is usually running the show on Thursdays, and I mean running the show. Uh, Parrish co-host every Thursday as well, but it's good to see you, Parrish. I hadn't seen you in a while. Good to be seen and not viewed, Mr. Duplantis. Good to be seen and not viewed. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> Things are good. I'm good. You know, it's, uh, did you, well, I know you were around during spring break because somebody had oh, to yeah. keep the station running, but did oh, yeah. we take any time off and, and get out for a little while? Not, you know, just relax, you know, uh, enjoy uh, some of the day. We had some really nice days. And, uh, I was able to just kind of, you know, sit outside and enjoy those. So, you know, it was fine. Nothing to complain good. about. I heard the weather was nice last week. Oh, yeah. It was really nice. Really, yeah. really nice. Yeah, I get back in town and we're back to, you know, typical Houston weather. So it's that's- cold and it's hot, you know, but I'll take yeah. that over East Coast snow any day of the week. Yep, uh, I believe it. Hey, uh, Parrish, want to welcome everybody watching us on Facebook Live and YouTube. We uh, have a show usually every uh, weekday that HCC is in session, live at 10 a.m. They can also catch us in social media and on our channel as well. Absolutely. We are live on Houston Community College District Facebook page. We're also on YouTube. We're on LinkedIn. We're on Twitter. And of course, we're on HCC TV at, at noon, 5 and 10 p.m. Monday through Friday. Parrish, last year we had a guest on the show talking about the Texana Cafe. I and remember. Yeah, uh, we've got Kate Johnson Pedagog joining us once again. She is the Director of Specialized Services at Texana Center and our Thursday Family Fun Day guest. Kate, it's good to see you again. Great to be here. Uh, happy to tell you about our one-year anniversary of Texana Cafe. Yeah, congratulations on that. We're looking forward to hearing from you shortly. So stick around. We'll be with you in about 10 minutes. Okay, we're going to kick things off with a, this pun is really going to be bad, but just bear with me. It's a powerful conversation about HCC launching a full degree and low voltage controls with everything to retail and grocery store automations. Walter Matt Adams has joined us. He's the program coordinator with HCC's electrical technology program from the Architectural Design and Construction Center of Excellence. Welcome back to the show, Matt. How are you this morning? Oh, I'm great. Uh, I'm kind of bored these days because, you know, there's just nothing exciting going on over here in electrical technology at all. You guys are so boring over there. Yeah. But let's start off. Um, we've got a date you may want to tell us about. Why is May 1st, 2023 important this year? So May 1st, 1893 was the Chicago World's Fair. And for it's interesting, having gone to the New Orleans World's Fair that, you know, today the World's Fair doesn't exist anymore. So you actually have a whole generation like what's the World's Fair? But yeah. that was the way that they showcased new technologies and new things. In fact, Iron Man 2, the movie at the beginning, that's kind of like a, a spinoff of a World's Fair. And so to me, I always tell the students, I said, May 1st, 1893 is kind of like our, you want to call it our Cotillion Ball, our debutante ball, where, hey, electricity, here we are, world. And so uh, May 1st this year is going to be 130 years of electricity. And it's interesting to see our evolution through that. Yeah, I mean, we've come a long way. Now we're using it in cars and all types of crazy things. Maybe you can tell us about what's going on with the electrical technology program these days. So, so as always, you know, it's great because we have a program that's thriving. We have at least 400 students. And I mean, we're getting more every day and they're, everybody's wanting to learn what we're teaching. Um, we always teach the meat and potato stuff, of course, which is your residential, your commercial, basic go out and they're always gonna be looking for uh, uh, people to hire to go out to work. But then also we're looking at century, 21st century technologies, uh, our solar and renewable stuff. Uh, now our, our low voltage, we've had uh, two classes, one in smart homes, one in smart buildings for about two years now. The students are really liking it. You know, talking about ring doorbells, Wi-Fi's and all that. And it's, gonna, and it's been our launching pad into our new degree plant launches this fall. Um, tell us what 646 is all about. Well, one of the things is, is if you listen to people like Mike Rowe, uh, the dirty jobs guy and stuff like yeah. this, I mean, everybody's telling you there's a shortage of worker in the trades. And so uh, I was talking with a recruiter one day, uh, uh, one of the uh, um, people at Central, and I was like trying to think about how do we get these young people's attention? And so 
with our three certificates, the residential, the commercial, and the solar, there's six classes only. You get six classes, you get out, you work for four years on the job, get your journeyman, and you can literally make a six-figure income. Well, I mean, it, it is, it, it's crazy. But, you know, I heard something a few years ago that really struck me. I'm sure you remember Tom Tynion. Mm-hmm. Worked here at HCC for many years, hosted a radio show for many years in the Houston market. And he was talking about master electricians. And he said, in my opinion, master electricians are could equate to someone with a doctorate because of the ed, of education and the time it takes to reach that status. Do you think that's still about the case? Oh, no, I totally agree. In fact, uh, you know, as they call it in the trades, being on your tools, master electricians, those aren't always people that are on their tools. They're they're bigger picture players. They're they're pulling permits and doing estimates and 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 they've got people. And so they get the people to do all that. And, and they're trying to, to be electrical contractors to move the world of the future now. Do our students have the option of continuing their education on either here or elsewhere to reach the status of, say, a master electrician? Well, the way it works is they'll they'll come through school, whether they get a certificate or they get our associate degree. Then they'll come out. And, and I don't we don't call them electricians because technically not all of our students are going to go the electrician route. Some of them are just going to go be electrical workers. I've got one student, she works for Amazon as a maintenance electrician, which is a different wow. sector. But yeah. if they want to go the electrician route, they get out, they have to do four years to get their journeyman, and then another two to get their master, and they have to take tests. And that's that's a viability. We need masters. We need journeymen. We need electrical workers. And what is the Turn Your License into Learning initiative that you guys have? So one of the things is, as program coordinator, when you start delving into things, you start figuring out how the system is wired um there's something called pla prior learning assessment and so we started looking at uh, uh working with somebody at district to what was a, a standard we could come up with to say hey here's what you want to learn what can we give you credit because honestly like a master electrician i don't need them coming and taking a basic class that they could probably teach stand on their head but what do they want to learn so what we did was we came up with a, a way to assess up to half the classes in credit so people like journeymen and masters that have been out there for four to six plus years that want to learn things like solar and low voltage and all the rest of stuff could come back in and pick up those new skills to be more relevant out in the field okay so let's get to what everybody's wondering about right now we've got smart tvs smart watches smartphones what is smart building technology because i know you guys are going to be moving in that direction Oh, man, it's, it's it's been our last year and a half of my life consuming and breathing and eating this thing. And so the president of my college about a year and a half ago in the summer charged me and and another program coordinator were coming up with a degree in what was called building automation, which building automation is more toward the HVAC arena and smart buildings. And so I looked at the pictures of everything and there was all this other stuff that nobody was doing. So it led me to people called integrators, which are the people that do like audio visual integration in like, for instance, our schools here at here at school. We have people that that maintain the lecterns and the projectors and all that. That's a job. And so those are called integrators, but security systems and fire. And so I started talking to all these different integrators. And the one thing that resonated throughout the whole industry was we have no people. And part of it was Department of Labor wise, they don't even exist as an industry because it's not like one company does it all and the next company does the same stuff and they compete against each other. They'll do different sectors of integration. So one of the things I decided to do was build this degree and it's the industry's just a buzz about it. I mean, everybody's talking about it all over the country and there's everybody's like, how can we get involved? How can we help out? And this will be the first uh, community college or university in the country that has a full-blown associate degree in this field. That's amazing. I mean, it's a, it's, as you mentioned, it's a, a field that desperately needs the workers and it's, it's booming right now. Smart homes, low voltage. What is that? Not just, and not just smart homes, smart buildings. We, I've been talking to Walmart corporate. If you graduate with an associate degree in this, they are going to start people out at 30 bucks an hour. In fact, People don't think about Walmart as this high tech company. They think about, oh, that's just where you buy your groceries, right? Well, they actually are a pretty high tech company. They every 10 seconds, they're pulling data on the, the refrigerated coolers. They're 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 putting what's called IoT, which is like cloud-based control technology, on their 
kitchens and stuff because they're trying to track things and control things. And they're trying to make the, the I call it di- being a digital concierge. They're trying to make your experience more fruitful, rewarding, and safe. If our students are interested, I imagine these are going to be very popular programs. Mm -hmm. Um, Are there available spaces? Uh, I mean, starting things in the fall, do you have some summer certification classes that people can still sign up for? Well, what we're going to be doing is because four of the classes in the new certificate for smart building technology are the same as a residential certificate. We're telling people if they want to start now, at least start in that certificate. And then four of those classes will transfer over in the fall and the great thing about it is once they finish those first six classes, uh, which the only difference is it's called structured cabling, which is Ethernet, fiber optics, and then a, 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 a class in the industry. But once they finish that, they won't have a problem getting a job just with those six classes. But then the industry wants them to do the deeper dive. I yeah. worked with organization, organizations from the state of Texas. So in, when you do low voltage controls, especially security, you have to get what's called a security license. And so once you get your security license, you, you're a golden ticket. I mean, you, you can go out and work. And some of these guys are making six figures as technicians. Wow. wow. I mean, it's it's an exciting field to get into. And uh, we're going to have all the information on the smart technology program at HCC and everything you need to know uh, in our social media post after the show. Matt, thanks for being here. Always good to see you. Thank you, sir. All right. Take care. Bye bye. As I mentioned at the top of the show with Parrish, it is Thursday Family Fun Day, and Parrish, we're welcoming back a very special guest. Another shocking interview by Todd Duplantis. Thank oh, you. Oh, stop with the puns, okay? It killed me to mention the <laughs> powerful interview, but... I'm joking so bad and saying that, but that's okay. We yeah. have the pleasure of, uh, of having a young lady back that we had on a year ago. Her name is Kate Johnson Patagock, and she is Director of Specialized Services for the Texana Center and our Thursday Family Fun Day guest. How are you today, Kate? I'm great, how are you? I am doing well, doing absolutely well. Now, we're looking forward to hearing about the organization, but before we get into the celebration, for those that don't know, tell us a little bit about Texana Cafe. So Texana Cafe employs uh, individuals that have intellectual disabilities or autism or other special needs and provides them valuable job training skills related to work readiness, food preparation, customer service, uh, selling retail items. For a lot of our interns, it is their first job ever and their first time being around coworkers and supervisors, as you can imagine. And as you can remember yourself, it's a lot of things to learn. Um, So go ahead. No, I, I I was just agreeing with you. Absolutely. I remember when I got my first job, yeah, they need to learn how to communicate with their supervisors, uh, start a class, start a task, and then finish it to completion, uh, customer service, attention to detail, and just having a positive attitude. Great. Now, how did you come up with this concept? Because this is a this is actually a great concept because actually it's needed. Yeah, you were just talking about uh, the need for employees out in the workforce, and there's definitely a big need for that. And then on the opposite side of that, the population of people with intellectual disabilities and autism are often underemployed. And so we want people uh, to reach their full goals and potentials. People who want to work in the food industry or retail, we provide the training for them. And even those who want to go on to do other things, it's valuable uh, work readiness that they learn here as far as how to um, have good work-related behaviors. Great. Now, how long, how long, let everybody know how long you guys have been open. So we've been open for one year. March uh, 10th was our one year anniversary. And today's the day we decided to celebrate that. So today uh, we're having our one year anniversary. We have a a special and an opportunity to spin a wheel to win free cookies. Our cookies are very famous, the chocolate chip M&M cookies. You're going to have to come out and try one of them, as well as our delicious soup sandwiches and um, coffee beverages. We've got wonderful sweet treats, not only just the cookies, but uh, cake pops and uh, Rice Krispie treats. And all of these things are made by our interns we, that we're training not only in the work readiness skills, but also the actual restaurant skills, how to make the sandwiches, soups, uh, sweet treats, and then how to serve them to the customers. Dr. Chip m M&M, you do not have to pull a gun on me to try that one. That sounds great. I'm uh, addicted. Interns and em- employees have you guys trained over this past year? 
So we, in the last year, we've trained 23 interns. We have eight there currently, 13 have graduated. Two of them went on to college to pursue different careers and seven are employed in the community. In fact, we have two graduating just today. Um, both of them actually ended up getting a job at a local place uh, called Dogtopia here in Fulcher. Great, that's awesome. Now, tell me a little bit about uh, your hours that you're open and things of that nature. So because we're a training facility, we're just open Monday through Friday and we're open for breakfast and lunch. We have wonderful breakfast tacos and uh, muffins and all of the breakfast goodies, as well as I already talked about the different lunch items. My favorite is our turkey with uh, roasted red bell peppers and mozzarella and a spicy feta spread. It's delicious. Wow. So uh, you guys basically do sandwiches and soups and things of that nature. Yeah. Okay, great. Now, what other services does Texacana Center provide? So we are uh, considered a community center. We're a nonprofit. We provide mental health and or behavioral health, uh, both terms are used, intellectual disability services and autism services. So we have um, everything from young children in our early childhood intervention program all the way up through uh, older adults. So we serve every population that with those uh, special needs and to try to provide them what they need. And that was part of why the Texana Cafe was created. So often people get a lot of services when they're kids, but when they graduate, then they find they don't have a, as many opportunities. So we wanted to make sure to provide more opportunities and help train people to meet their goals and dreams in life. That is great. Now, Texana Cafe, it's been around a year. Do you plan on doing more or is this just kind of your startup? Do you plan on uh, opening additional facilities? Very good question. We don't have another plan for another Texana Cafe at the moment. We do plan to eventually, uh, we are on a larger piece of land here in Fulcher. So we plan to open a second building for our Texana Children's Center for Autism. Currently, we have two classrooms or two treatment rooms in the back of the facility, and it only serves up to eight clients because it's so small. And so our other location, for example, in Rosenberg, we have, I think, 38 children served there and I think 22 in, in Sugarland. So we plan to expand our children's services, and then that will open the back half of the cafe so we can have a bigger restaurant here. And also, we do some training for adults in other areas, such as computer classes, um, let's see, we have social skills because that is one of the areas that people with autism often struggle interacting with others. And then uh, also uh, just it, we have a dance class, Cookie Joe's Dance Studio, because you know everything isn't just work in life. You have to have some fun and leisure as well. So you name it, we're teaching classes to help adults with intellectual disabilities and autism to meet their, meet their potential. And you must make time to dance, Kate. You must right. dance. Now, uh, this is really a great thing that you guys are doing. Uh, how can people outside of you guys support your mission? First of all, come and eat breakfast or lunch out at Texana Cafe. Our goal is to become a self-sustaining uh, enterprise. Currently, we are also supported by donors because we don't have enough business yet. So you come on in with our first thing. But secondly, if you want to help donate, the, the um, at texanacenter.com. You can donate right there on our website and then that money helps us to be able to pay the interns while they while they work and learn those valuable job skills as well as helps other areas of Texana. Great, now what are the job responsibilities of all of the employees that you guys bring in at Texana Center? So uh, at Texana Cafe, we have cafe coordinators that teach the interns and the interns are employees as well, the, the job readiness skills in the restaurant. But we have um, every uh, helping career you can think of. We have board certified behavior analysts in our Children's Center for Autism, behavior technicians. We have licensed professional counselors in our um, behavioral health areas. We have um, in our early childhood intervention program, we have OTPT speech and early intervention specialists. So there's a lot of job opportunities at Texana. And also you can help us by applying if you're looking for a job, because just like all of the other uh, sectors in the US, we are looking for more employees. 
That is great. Kate, I think you guys do a really, really wonderful job. And I hope you guys do get a chance to open um, more. I think this is a very valuable thing and nobody's doing it. So, you know, congratulations to you guys and congratulations on a year. They say if you stay open a year, you can stay open 20 years. So I wish you much, much success. Is there anything that you guys got anything coming up? That you um, want to talk about? Let's see. I, I guess off the top of my head, I'm just encouraging people to come any day of the week out to our cafe and come have breakfast or lunch. Great. And again, can you give me your operating hours? Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. till 3 p.m. That is absolutely awesome. Thank you, Kate. Thank you for going. Thank you for joining us and come back because we want to do the two-year anniversary as well. Great. I would love to. That is great. Thank you so much. Her name is Kate Johnson Pedagog, Director of Specialized Services for Texana Center and our Thursday Family Fun Day guest. We'll have more information on Texana Center in our post after the show. Thanks again, Kate. Great seeing you. Great to see you too. Thank you. All right. Thank you both. Okay, kids, a few announcements uh, to wrap up the show. Uh, one of them, Women in STEM, celebrating Women's History Month. HCC Central uh, Library Student uh, Vi Library Advisory Council. That's a mouthful. I know. I'm trying to get through that. But they're celebrating Women's History Month with Women in STEM, focusing on empowerment and their journey into STEM. Uh, the, they have a special event happening next week, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Tuesday, March 28th. It's at HCC's Central Campus at the Harmon Building. Make sure you check that out. We'll have some information in our post after the show on how you can register. And there's a small business success series uh, going on as well, Parrish. Absolutely. It's developed by HCC Northwest Linda and David Regenbaum Center for Entrepreneurship. Now, these in-person workshops offer hands-on interaction with faculty, business experts, and peer delegates, starting with Debt the Venture. That happens 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Friday, March the 31st. And then the next event will be Ignite the Entrepreneur in You. That happens 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Friday, April the 14th. Find out more details and register by checking out our post after Okay, art exhibition happening at the Northwest College, New Visions of the American South. This is a faculty exhibition. Faculty artist Natalie Stovall is currently holding a solo exhibition of her work inspired by her reflections and experiences during a road trip from the American Southwest to the Southern East Coast. Check that out at HCC's Northwest Spring Branch Gallery. Of course, it's free and it's running through April the 6th. We'll have a link in our post after the show with more information. And students have a chance to make some art, produce some art, and have them on our graduation program cover. Yeah, this is really great. As graduation approaches, approaches ACC wants to make it memorable, a memorable event by showcasing students' design skills with the best commencement ceremony cover for spring 2023 and fall 2023. The two winners will not only get their artwork published in the publications but and promotional material, but they will also have an opportunity to win a brand new iPad. Deadline to submit is the is 5 p.m. Wednesday, April the 19th. Check our post, check our post in our show for email and registration. You know, one of the cool things about that, a few years back, uh, one of the students designed the cover for the program. Well, that student now has been an employee for several years for our communications department as a graphic artist. So, you know, it could lead to anything. It doesn't happen all the time, but, you know, uh, we showcase a lot of talent and a lot of the talent that we showcase wind up working for us. So that's a pretty cool thing as well. Uh, show your skill set. Skills USA competition. HCC in partnership with Skills USA will host the Texas Post-Secondary Skills and Leadership Competition this spring. And all current HCC students enrolled in technical workforce classes can compete. Wednesday through Friday, April 13th through the 15th, that's where it's happening. We will have some information in our post after the show on how you can attend. And Parrish, we're already registering students for this summer. It is spring, but summer registration is open. Summer registration has already begun, so it's time to get in gear and register. All courses offer in-person as well as online options. Online anytime, online on a schedule, hybrid, in-person, and hybrid lab. To learn more about HCC programs, start dates, and options to cover costs, go to hccs.edu slash apply. That's hccs.edu slash apply.
www.edu slash apply. And make sure you do it soon because those summer classes fill up fast. We're just the earlier the better. The earlier the better. I mean, Darren Baskin was on the show yesterday and we were talking about this and a lot of the summer classes are full. So, so wow. you still have time to sign up, but the summer classes, they fill up. So make sure you do that. Okay. Tomorrow we've got film Friday, uh, favorite HCC filmmaker, Jenny Waldo will be back on the show and she'll tell us the latest about her upcoming film. And we'll be tackling the subject of food insecurity again, when we visit with the folks who handle HCC's uh, Central Eagle Market. Want to know more about that? You can check it out tomorrow. Parrish, you're here like every Thursday, right? Most of the time. Most, Most of the time. time. Yeah. And you also kind of host the topic at times too, right? I do that. I do that. You know, I'm, uh, you know, they allow me to bring down the property value. So I continue to do it. So, you know. Well, there you go, folks. Uh, join Parrish next week. Catch him on the topic. I'll be here tomorrow and we're live at 10 a.m. for up to the minute. We'll see you then.